Good morning, dear ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Contemporary Digital Implant Dentistry with SeaGuide. The topic today would be the parameter of aesthetics on implants and their application in the digital workflow. In the freehand surgery, we had, based on science and clinics, uh, parameters, defined parameters of implant design, implant position, grafting procedures, dimensions of the bone and of the soft tissue around implants. Now, in the digital workflow, we have technologies where we have to implement those parameters and also to find techniques and methods to make the treatments more minimally invasive since this is the sense of the digital workflow. So, the question is, and what I would like to discuss with you today, is where are we in this digital dentistry field? Which are the parameters which we know? How do we apply these parameters in the digital workflow? And which are maybe the parameters which we are still looking for and we still want to implement? And also, which are the technologies we are still, which are still missing? Which are the parameters which uh, are still uh, to be found in order to do the treatment even more minimally invasive, aesthetic and functional. So in the freehand implant placement, we managed to reestablish bony situation, soft tissue situation and transform them in kind of pleasing aesthetic uh, situations in adjacent implant uh, reconstructions. All these parameters of aesthetics were defined in different um, studies, uh, own ones, but also generally. And we realized that we have a high success of the osseointegration integration in all these cases, freehand placed cases under certain parameters. Now, today we work with uh, static navigation and dynamic navigation, and actually, every each and every case is an uh, um, digital planned case and uh, digital or a navigated surgery. Because we realize that those treatments can be even more minimally invasive. It ha they have a higher precision than the free hand. Uh, also an immediate placement of implants. They have a better aesthetic and functional outcome and higher predictability also uh, because the planning is uh, much more clear and much more controlled. And it's a reduced time of the surgery if it's well made uh, well. Planning is the longer time. The surgery, which uh, requires the presence of the patient, is much more reduced, much more controlled, much more predictable. Nevertheless, uh, we need to find some additional parameters in order to apply and to add all these technologies and to make them match together in a coherent workflow. Now, the digital workflow is applied in our offices since a couple of years and uh, if we do a one-year follow-up on 12 patients, we see even a higher success of the, of the of prosthetic reconstructions after one year, but more studies are needed. Some of the cases that we address today are part of the study and uh, are the base of our parameters, uh, aesthetic parameters, which we would like to design and to define for the future. The static navigation has four steps, scan, plan, make, done. The scan 
st stage is the acquiring of all the digital informations of the patient with all the technologies which we have today. Beginning with a photography, a video of the patient, a face scanning, an intraoral scan, lab scan, an occlusal analysis of the patient, uh, a registration of the movements of the jaw, and a DICOM data acquiring with a Combin CT technology. The photography is uh, useful because not only for documentation, but it's a sine qua non condition for the technician to build up uh, and to visualize 2D and 3D the future smile. We use uh, Combeam CT technologies which uh, have certain features, uh, low um, dose cap capabilities, and we will work in the future with definitely uh, 3D uh, technology and not with a 2D. The jump is very short to that. A secure patient positioning, since we know that the positioning of the patient is one of the, of the sources of, of mismatching discrepancies and, uh, and, and distortions uh, between the planning and the result. Uh, then artifact reduction algorithm, uh, an, a high image accuracy, and so on. We use intraoral scanners which have as higher has high accuracy, precision, and trueness as possible. And that is why uh, we follow the studies uh, made uh, and, uh, and uh, done by uh, societies and uh, by researchers, uh, taking into consideration uh, more and more newer and newer uh, intraoral scanners. We have the conclusion, preliminary conclusion, that we have a high accuracy of the intraoral scanners in a single tooth or in reduced number of teeth situation or implant situation, but in a full arch uh, situation, the accuracy is not as high as expected uh, or as wanted. Another uh, data acquirement is the registration of the movement of the jaw digitally which is a huge benefit, a huge advantage, because it avoids um, the bite registration and also the face bow. Another advantage is that the movement of the jaw um, can be transposed uh, in the, an increased occlusal vertical dimensions, which will be done in the same device, in the same technology. And this situation will be transported in all the phases of the digital workflow to the provisional restoration, uh, immediate loaded provisional restoration, but also in the final restoration. So that movement can be implemented, the digital movement will be implemented in, uh, in, a, in the planning software and in the uh, CAD CAM software and uh, worked with this movement and with this byte situation reg registered at the beginning. Uh, Sensor-based occlusal registration and, and adjustment is a an, an, um, mandatory condition when we work with implants. And this is the new state of the art of the occlusion. Blue paper is last year. Uh, we need a much more sophisticated and much more precise technology which offers us a precision of 25 microns in order to avoid overloading, uh, shear forces, interferences on implants because, as we know, implants has no resilience and all the prosthetic parts has no re not the resilience of the constructions on natural teeth. So we need definitely, and since we know the complications which can occur as a result of the, of the overloading in terms of bone loss as cause, one of the causes of periimplantitis, we realize how important is a very good adjustment of the occlusion. Then uh, the next step is plan. What do we plan? We plan digitally. What can we plan with, uh, with uh, technologies? 2D and 3D planning of the smile. So after the 2D pl planning, we match all this, uh, this information that we have in the 3D planning. So beginning uh, with the photography, uh, where we can visualize with different softwares and technologies, the new proportions of the teeth matching to the face. Um, now this 2D 
uh, technologies made by uh, Keynote can be automatized with some softwares or even uh, with the help of artificial intelligence and uh, virtual reality or augmented reality to um, visualize in movement the teeth of the patient, uh, adjust dynamically the modifications in movement. So very fascinating uh, technologies uh, to see, to visualize 2D the teeth. Now, this 2D visualization can be, of course, mock up, walks up to a virtual walks up, can be done, can be 3D done in, in the CAT CAM software, matched with a face scan or with the photographies and with all the other uh, virtual data which we acquire. This matching all this data. And the matching is also based on sometimes on uh, some of the parts of the matching are based on artificial intelligence is the base for planning the guide, the surgical guide, planning the implant position, the graft amount, the amount of and, and the technique of the, uh, the bone grafting or soft tissue grafting uh, of the implants, surgical guide and of the provisional. Artificial intelligence is helping us also to uh, to find the nerve on a, on a uh, automat automatized base. Also the position of the implants will be done uh, with help of the artificial intelligence on the spot and this is all studies ongoing study. Now after the planning, the base, the planning is the base to the manufacturing of the parts and the technology used for manufacturing is uh, the printing and milling technology. Now printing is the future milling. Printing uh, is depending the quality accuracy of the printing is depending on the quality uh, of the printer uh, and we print surgical guides, provisionals, uh, models. Now of course there is need to studies uh, regarding the accuracy of the of the printers of the 3D printers in dentistry, one of the recent articles uh, published together with Francesco Mangano, Matteo Bonaccina, uh, Davide Faronato, and other colleagues, are showing that using a reference, um, an initial reference, and also um, orthodontic models printed, are showing that they are linear. Uh, discrepancies between the printers, amplitude um, discrepancies, uh, and also diameter discrepancies between the printers. And this is very, very uh, explainable because the technology uh, behind the printer is different. Some are stereolithographic technology, the others are light uh, based, based on mirroring uh, the images. Uh, and also the material used by the, by the printers is different. Another interesting conclusion is that the linear and diameter um, measurements is, are different between the machines and the trueness of the models um, is uh, after, one, uh, after one year after printing uh, is different. That means that there are some uh, dimensional contractions which happens over time. So this is a very interesting conclusion. Now, after we printed all these parts, we go to the surgery where we have all this part pre-prepared, the plan, the, the plan already done, and with the help of the static uh, guide, we will place the implant in a perfect aesthetic driven position. And of course, all these workflows has a certain accuracy or lack of accuracy, which is subject of many studies, actual studies, uh, ongoing studies, and, and previous studies. Beginning with, uh, with simple cases and, and ending with uh, more complex ones, let's go to different workflows and discussing about different issues in, the, in all these four steps and different parameters uh, used and, and to be used in the planning. Now, this is a case of, an, uh, of a 12 years old lady uh, which is um, having an, uh, had an accident and has a soft tissue deficiency which will, will be uh, corrected by a connective tissue graft in the first row and then having the enough amount of bone we do a digital planning of the implant this is the, um, the, pos the perfect positioning and the soft tissue situation after uh, the provisional abutment 
uh, respecting the amount uh, of the soft tissue gained and respecting the design, the S-shape form design of the final abutment, uh, we can get a nice uh, aspect of the soft tissue around the, the single implant, but also adjacent implants. We know that the S-shaped concavity of the transmucosal portion of the final abutment will conserve a firmer connective tissue barrier. That is why we use implant systems which uh, need to, to, which have already the concave profile of the running room and uh, is the base, which is the base for a very nicely done individual abutment. That is why the final result in the model, but also the final result in the mouth are very pleasing. And this situation is stable in time. Another uh, case, uh, more an interdisciplinary case, is a missing lateral case of a young lady with a kind of gummy smile. The uh, orthodontist opened the side for an uh, implant in the lateral zone, and after the finalizing the orthodontic um, uh, treatment, we make a smile design you know, with a keynote procedure to see what is the aspect, what would be the aspect of the final uh, reconstructions which the patient can have in order to compensate a little bit the gummy smile and give the patient a pleasing uh, result. So after the, the 2D planning of the smile, we realize also that we need to do a bone grafting in the lateral area because missing laterals needs to have, uh, uh, it, it's lacking bone in the missing lateral um, region. And we choose an incision techniques which don't give, not an intracellular incision, which gives a recession, uh, but uh, also not a uh, papilla sparing incision in order not to have scars in that visible gingiva. So we use an incision which is a hybrid uh, uh, incision between the both um, with the papilla sparing and a half intracellular uh, incision. So the aspect of the tissue after the grafting is, uh, is like this. And then we can go to the 3D visualization of the, or 3D walks up based on the 2D visualization of the smile and the planning of the implant based on, an, on the aesthetic uh, 3D uh, walks up, digital walks up. You can see in the planning software the amount of bone grafted and the reality that we can place now the two implants in, a, uh, in an aesthetic position. We respect two important planning parameters I will show you in a minute. And after the planning we can go with a very precise guided surgery. The parameter of planning uh, respects two, uh, two algorithms. Uh, the depth of the insertion, which is four, around four millimeters from the free gingival margin that we achieved, right? And uh, the implant is also one millimeter subcrestally at least. And another parameter is the total buckle distance. That means the distance of the color of the implant from the most buckle contour which you see with a green line should be totally around four millimeters. By this preliminary planning we realize that after the recovery and after the doing uh, the CAT CAM uh, milling, uh, planning and milling of the veneers after two years, we have an, uh, we superpose the STL file with the comb CT of the implant planning, and we realize that the distance uh, which we planned is still there. That means this parameter is enough to maintain the uh, stability of bone and the soft tissue uh, or the, the, the main volume around implant. That means the aesthetic appearance of the construction in, in the long time. And uh, based on the future cases, we respected this parameter of the, on the following cases, we respected these parameters as an algorithm, not necessarily the amount of the bone and the amount of the soft tissue separately, but the sum of these two dimensions buccally and uh, vertically, uh, meaning in the depth of the insertion, and evaluated the result. So this is the case uh, of this young lady. 
so what is the situation in the full arch uh, navigation? We have the same workflow in the full arch navigation by scan, plan, make, done. Immediate placement, immediate loading. Trying to define the algorithm and to respecting the algorithms which we preliminarily know in all these cases and evaluating the result. This is an ongoing study. The FD1 situation is the situation where you place the implant in an extraction socket without uh, destroying the structures existing there. Uh, soft tissue and bone, bony situations are enough, are uh, sufficient uh, for, our, um, for our restoration. And this is a, an example of, a, of the workflow uh, in, in a daily base. We scan the the situation we do photographies uh, the patient has a disastrous um, situation we match uh, and plan the future smile in an uh, in an uh, exocad planning software uh, where the implant is also implemented we implement the movement of the jaw which we registered of the patient and this movement uh, with an increased occlusal vertical dimensions uh, is the base for the provisional which we do in advance and also for the final this is the same environment in the digital environment including the movement which we use for the final we plan the implants in a tooth by tooth reconstruction upper and lower uh, matching also the we can match also the face scan uh, in this uh, environment and, and uh, making all the steps in this matched uh, procedures, uh, technologies. Then we plan the implant and the guide in a way that is a tooth supported guide. We know from studies that the tooth supported guide is much more stable than the uh, soft tissue supported guide. That is why we uh, choose always a strategy where we maintain one, two teeth, which afterwards will be extracted in order to stabilize the guide uh, by some existing teeth, right? In our upper and lower. The make stage will, uh, will um, consider the uh, printing of the uh, guides with a, this time a sleeve guided surgery and also the manufacturing of the provisionals based on the 3D walks up. Uh, we use different methods to uh, match the provisional in the perfect aesthetic position like that uh, palatal base. And then we go to the surgery, which uh, is actually the perfect um, translation of the planning into the mouth in a very structured approach. That needs a previous session with a team and with a technician in order to see the, uh, the priorities of every member of the team. And if that is made in advance, the surgery itself is happening in a minimum of time and a minimum of efficiency and the less of mistakes, upper and lower. We also uh, use the socket um, grafting and in the sockets which the implants are placed, the parameter, previous mentioned parameters are respected in the depth of the insertion, but also in the buckle um, uh, dimension, buckle palatal dimension. We use always um, multi-units abutment to uh, screw retain the provisional. We, screw, we um, seal the sockets and the patient gets this provisional to go home. The patient will use uh, the in at the in the time of the osseointegration integration soft food is an immediate loading. The implants which are placed in the sinus elevated regions will not be loaded. Only the implant which are primary stable are loaded. We, that's why we use implant systems which have a good initial stability in almost all bone qua uh, qualities. In a sinus elevation regions, we don't have the three quarters of the implant covered by natural bone. That is why the criteria of immediate loading is not fulfilled. Susan has short teeth, has a decreased occlusal vertical dimension, which we need to increase. 
uh, that is the base for our um, walks up this time. This is an older case. This was this was made uh, hand handmade and uh, lab scan wise um, scanned um, matched with a comb beam CT. And this is the base for the planning of the implants, respecting our parameters, planning of the guide uh, in in a digital manner, and manufacturing the model by printing and manufacturing the guide by um, in this time the provisional will have a metal frame uh, because the teeth are not so too high in order to um, avoid uh, fractures. So then the surgery is actually uh, an, very easily done also an internal sinus elevation. Um, we graft also simultaneously and this is the situation of the of the patient after the surgery and this is the situation of the provisional. Now of course patient comes sometimes edentulous and in this case the planning starts with the, the uh, a comb beam CT so the, the patient has only two roots so that makes a difference because the, we know already that the guide will be soft tissue soft tissue supported so we will have to work with pins and also the planning needs uh, needs to be done in a way that the denture will be uh, or the wax up will be mm, of the denture will be matched with a comb beam CT with some um, opaque references. Um, before ahead at the time we will do a an, an smile design um, and we realize that the teeth should be uh, bigger than before so this is the wax up uh, in the form of a denture with opaque points which will be the radiologic um, guide in the same time in order to have matching uh, points uh, with a comb beam CT. Uh, of course, we do a scan of the edential situation too, and matching all the components are the base. This is the base for planning the guide, planning the provisional, uh, and to manufacture all the parts which we need then for the surgery. Uh, we can get also a model-based um, provisional and a provisional screw-retained um, abutments, the provisional in advance, the guide, uh, and a an, uh, kind of aesthetic guide or, um, or simple guide for the lower jaw, since in the lower jaw we don't intend to do a fully guided surgery. The provisional is there and we go for the surgery. The set of the insertion is very well uh, organized where we go from, from length to length and from the diameter to diameter in a very coordinated way, so it's no uh, way for mistakes. The surgical um, procedure was done and the screw retained abutments are inserted. The patient is going home with a provisional which is screw retained and this is the situation uh, directly after the surgery and sinus elevation. The situation immediately after the surgery is quite uh, okay and looks really minimally invasive. Now after the healing of, um, of the implants, after the integration of the implants which can be four, between four and six months, in this case six months because of the sinus elevation, we do an impression over the multi-unit abutments. The, in, the implant has a conical, more tapered conical connection, therefore in order to have uh, no vertical discrepancy of the, of the impression, we do all um, impressions over the multi-unit abutments with an open tray. In the lower jaw we can do a an, uh, an closed tray because we do uh, single teeth uh, screw retained restorations. In the upper jaw will be a full mouth screw retained restoration. In the lower jaw single teeth screw retained. Um, the constructions will be done in a zirconia frame with a ceramic coating on it and uh, this is the aspect of the restoration and the happy patient. So it's a high jump in the quality of life. Now this young lady is, an, uh, is a particular FP1 situation where really we have all the anatomic structures uh, necessary to do a non-invasive procedure. Um, nevertheless we use criteria of insertion of the implant 
an extraction of the tooth which are a consensus. That means if a periodontally um, ill, sick tooth is after one year of treatment still infected and still mobile and the residual bone height is less than eight millimeters in some region is the time to place an implant. After those criteria, and the criteria that the tooth should be as healthy as to be held in the mouth then for the next 10 to 20 years, we extract all the teeth in the upper jaw and in the lower jaw we maintain seven teeth which are uh, stable periodontally on the long run. I have a high predictability periodontally seen. We do a wax up which we scan by the lab scan. Uh, the, this work was done by Uli Hauschild. Uh, we explain the patient what she will get. She will get single teeth in the frontal area, small bridges in the lateral area, all implant supported, and in the lower lower jaw, uh, we will maintain seven teeth, and the rest will be replaced by implant. Matching as in the previous situations, the comb beam CT data, the DICOM data, with the STL file of the um, WOXUP. This is the base for planning the implant, finding a, in a perfect aesthetic position, planning the provisional uh, abutments, screw retained or, or uh, even cemented, um, planning the grafting uh, in the lateral area, planning all the surgery step by step mentally. So those are, this is the moment where we use all the algorithm which we know uh, regarding the implant uh, design, choose the position, the number, the grafting procedure and their um, sequence, the navigation type, the surgical guide type even, the prosthetic reconstructions provisional and final. Some of the steps meaning um, implant planning in the implant planning softwares, in the CAD CAM softwares, and also in the matching of the technologies are based of, of, uh, on artificial intelligence. And this is a technology in digital dentistry, which is uh, very, very much incoming. Now, remember the parameters of the bone and of the soft tissue, which we, uh, which we need to respect, the two millimeter of bone and the three millimeter of soft tissue and the thickness, height and keratinized tissue. We tend to have these parameters and we tend also to achieve a, or have or to maintain a height of the papilla or height of the soft tissue, uh, uh, the cemented restoration as a final restoration, knowing knowing that in very many anatomical situations, like 80%, the screw is coming out buckly if you don't use a multi-unit abutment for single tooth, uh, which is transforming that in a screw retain uh, reconstruction or a tilted canal. We respect the uh, parameters and algorithms of the depth of the insertion of uh, four millimeters and also the buckle, the distance between the color of the implant and the most buckle contour of four millimeters in order to assure a stable aesthetic situation on time preliminary. So we have this, this provisional in advance. We go for a flapless surgery where we maintain two teeth in order to support the guide uh, because we know that this, that two supported guide is much more stable than the, the soft tissue supported. And we go to the surgery, um, we can, which, is, which is very well planned, and we can see a precise positioning of the implants, which is much more precise than the free hand, and this is documented in the literature. Due to the lack of accuracy of different technologies, lack of accuracy of the matchings, yeah, until now, we still have a discrepancy, and also in the, the discrepancy and, and, the, and the lack of accuracy of, printer, of the printers, uh, we have a discrepancy between the planning of the implant and the insertion of 0 0.7, 0 0.8, or even less, depending on the chain and on the digital workflow and other technologies uh, in the workflow, implemented in the workflow. And this is the subject of a lot of studies and because we try to decrease the uh, lack of accuracy and to make a smooth, to create a smooth workflow with the less um, lack of accuracy possible. Nevertheless, 
knowing that there is a discrepancy between or a, or, or a mismatch between the planning and the, and the placement of the implant, we have to take that into consideration in the planning of the implant. So nevertheless, the aesthetic planning of the implant is as we planned, as you see, is uh, mainly the same as we planned in the software. This is the situation after the placement of the implant and insertion of the provisional, which looks uh, pleasing after uh, the, the day after, and the patient is satisfied. We check the occlusion with a sensor-based technology in order to have a balanced occlusion and a very well um, uh, an occlusion in harmony because it has an immediate loading and we don't have to have overloading on the implant. Now, since we are not uh, doing an, an intraoral scan over the, all the full arch reconstructions, we get back to the uh, open trade impression uh, over the multi unit abutments and over the multi unit abutments and the superimposition between the provisional and uh, the scan of the provisional, STL of the provisional, and the STL of the impression, we, that is the base to build up and to design the individual abutments. Some of the softwares are able to define the margin of the abutment paragingivally or slightly subgingivally based on the soft tissue thickness and calculate the this the tissue displacement which happens and those are parameters those are technologies which we have to implement and to use in uh, in in the softwares uh, in order to have a predictable margin of the abutments and design of the emergence profile an example, like a parenthesis now, an example of application of the artificial intelligence in the fixed implant prosthodontics was documented in a recent article um, published in the BMC Oral Health uh, with uh, uh, our colleagues uh, Francesco Mangano and Jafar and Oleg Admakin, which um, is based on the reality of, of a single tooth uh, replacement on implants where an an uh, individual abutment and a temporary crown was uh, made in a CAD software and it was scanned. Now the scanned uh, hybrid abutment will be stored as an STL file in a certain part of the software. Then um, after the healing uh, and in order to do the final crown instead of doing uh, pouring a model or, or printing a model and doing the final final uh, crown we uh, scan again the uh, final abutment uh, the abutment and the software is able in this moment to take the data the stl file from that individual case and match it with the actual case through an artificial intelligence mechanism on the other hand, is able to trace, uh, to place it in the highlighted region and to trace the margin line as it was before, independent of the level of the gingiva after the healing. This way, the software can place and can model the final crown with a, uh, in, after the, this design uh, in the same software, reducing the time of the manufacturing of uh, and avoiding printing, which would avoid at the same time um, lacks uh, of the in the accuracy of the result. So the deviation, a mean deviation, was 45 microns, which is really uh, acceptable uh, between the planning and uh, between the the quality of the fabrication of the individual hybrid abutment. So that is why. Um, is a statement that artificial intelligence implemented is reducing the time uh, and uh, facilitating uh, the precision of the final reconstruction. Back to the, our patient, the design of the individual abutment have the S shape, which we need to have, and the margins of the abutments are paragingivally or slightly subgingivally. A parameters which has to be respected and maybe implemented also in the CAT CAN systems is the three to four millimeter between the margins of the abutment in order to assure the papilla between the, between the uh, implant crowns. Nevertheless, 
we learn from our mistakes. The situation is after two years um, stable that the way it was before and if we look at the initial situation and the pleasing smile of the patient uh, after two years so we definitely have a jump in the life uh, quality of the patient on the other hand we uh, observe the stable bony and soft tissue situation around this uh, these implant designs with a more stapled conical connection concave profile of the running room and all the features that we need to have in order to avoid uh, bone loss and soft tissue so we check that uh, situate that parameter and we see that the four millimeters are a parameter to be maintained and to be respected in order to maintain the volume uh, peri-implantary in, in the long run. Now, of course, we reconstruct the structures, but the key on a long-term success which the patient wants to have is also the maintenance. And this is made uh, by a recall every four months in order to avoid the trans transition between an eventual mucositis to a periimplantitis, which is irreversible or very unpredictably treated. So that is why we do a recall every four months to treat any mucositis if it's, if it's necessary to avoid periimplantitis. On the top of it, uh, once a year, we do a decontamination with one of the technologies out there and a an, um, sensor-based occlusal uh, control or adjustment, especially in uh, not only in implants, pure implant-supported situations, but also tooth and implant-supported situations in order to avoid any occlusal, um, uh, occlusal shear forces or uh, forces which would damage the implant and cause bone loss. That is why, uh, based on seconds uh, and on micro uh, and on microns, the sensor-based technology is able to adjust the occlusion in a implant and teeth situation by implant time delay or in pure implant situation by uh, measurement by seconds. So all these parameters can be read in the uh, handbook of research and clinical application of computerized occlusal analysis in dental medicine. All the occlusal adjustment has to be done as mentioned at the beginning in all the steps of the restoration from the beginning, provisional, final, and once a year in order to have a, uh, one of the conditions fulfilled of long-term maintenance of the restoration. And this is one of the um, subject is the subject of a multicenter study which will be published end of this year. Now, the sleeve guided uh, implant surgery has its disadvantages by the lack of, uh, of sterilization by um, by the sleeve uh, guided surgery, we are not able to control the primary stability of the implant and so on. That is why there are other guides, uh, sleeveless guides, which are, which are an innovation in the field of guided surgery and seems to have a couple of advantages. The technology is guiding not, the, uh, not by sleeves but by the handpiece which is guided through canals um, in the drilling but also in the implant uh, insert, uh, inserting procedure. It seems to be that by, by studies that the precision is even higher than the sleeve guided surgery but more studies are necessary to prove that which are ongoing studies. This technology has as I said a couple of advantages more and that means is an irrigation there which reduces the heat uh, then is uh, heat sterilization possible by the guide. It's a good vision, so we can do an open surgery without removing the guide. Um, then it's no contamination of the implant sites because there are no sleeves. And uh, we have a real implant torque control that we can control the primary stability of the implant. So there are a couple of advantages there. 
So this, uh, we did a couple of cases um, with the same implant design and different guide technologies. The planning is respecting the parameters which we mentioned before. Um, and again, if the soft tissue situation is, uh, is appropriate, we don't need additional uh, uh, grafting uh, technologies, but if, if so, then we need to open the flap and graft accordingly with one of the techniques uh, of, uh, and matrices which we, uh, we mentioned in another lecture. Uh, we, have, we can imp increase the soft tissue thickness by using matrices uh, plus minus uh, PRF in order to predictably increase the soft tissue thickness. And that can be done uh, with an open, open uh, technology uh, with this guide. So nevertheless, the soft tissue situation looks uh, pleasing after the provisional. And then we go for the final restoration, which will be done uh, CAT CAM. Uh, and uh, this is the happy patient at the end of the of the treatment. Another uh, navigation technology is the dynamic navigation. The advantage of this technology is that we don't need a static guide made in advance. That means is an uh, are less costs and less time um, necessary. Uh, the challenge is that the guided surgery needs to uh, have a skill of the surgeon to follow a four-dimensional target uh, in order to place the implant in the planned position. Also, in a full arch reconstruction, we, uh, if we have residual teeth, we use the teeth as a reference to stabilize the uh, the reference on the other for the camera uh, on the other hand we need uh, um, after the planning on uh, maybe a mini implant to uh, as support for the uh, camera reference we can do all the procedures added to this uh, technology uh, freehand like sinus uh, or also bone grafting uh, technologies and uh, this case were, was done also then CAT CAM at the end of the day. This is the OPG of the situation, the upper jaw and the aspect of the construction. Another advantage of the dynamic navigation is that, uh, that the evaluation of the, um, of the deviation is, um, can be done immediately with a software uh, immediately at the, uh, at the surgery. It seems to have, and this is of course what we want, to have a better precision uh, by, uh, as the free hand, um, less deviation as the free hand surgery. Uh, and of course, the more experience gained, the more precise is the result. So all these advantages uh, of the dynamic navigation uh, and also of the static navigation is including a certain experience of the surgeon. There are differences in the accuracy of the result also regarding the surgeon's experience. And that is why by uh, looking for technologies and, um, and uh, accuracy uh, tests, we, uh, through education, uh, we need to reduce the lack of accuracy of the result. So evaluating all these cases did, uh, made by all these navigation techniques in full arch reconstructions over three years, uh, we have a high success of the reconstructions. And just to mention some of preliminary uh, parameters, and, and realities uh, after all these cases, we can, uh, we can resume that we have certain studies uh, of accuracy, trueness, and precision. We need more studies on the accuracy, trueness, and precision of different devices. We need to have make studies and tests by accuracy of matching or to find technologies which are giving us uh, a, a more accurate matching of the technologies and integration in the same workflow. Then the algorithm number four seems to be a valuable parameter or algorithm in the insertion depth and the buckle position of the implant in a static zone 
or generally. Um, then the prosthetic solution uh, is dictated by the tissue height and by the axis of the implant. We need to learn minimally invasive grafting techniques in order to keep the treatment minimally invasive, like soft tissue grafting with envelope and uh, pinhole technique, like the SMART technique for the bone grafting, etc. if it's possible. We have to consider the S-shape emergence profile design using technologies which are uh, predicting us the, and defining, are able to define us the form of the emergence profile, the displacement of the tissue and placement trace and tracing of the margin uh, line of the abutment. So use the technology for that. Uh, the parameter of three to four millimeter inter-abutment distance is important in order to give the base for the papilla. So all, are, all those are already uh, parameters known, which has to be which has to be respected and implemented as much as possible with or without help of artificial intelligence in the planning softwares. And of course, all these parameters, all these reconstructions. Um, has to be maintained with a certain recall uh, menu, which is avoiding uh, the um, periimplantitis, mucositis, and periimplantitis. Again, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning are fascinating uh, technologies which are invading the existing softwares and the existing technologies in digital dentistry. Uh, this, uh, together with 3D uh, printing and bioprinting, are new technologies which are coming in and making the digital workflow even more predictable, more minimally invasive, uh, more aesthetic, and, uh, and uh, long-term uh, success. And this is um, what we need to implement based on scientific uh, results into the daily um, work uh, in order to have with our patient a common satisfaction. Uh, with this, I would like to uh, thank you for your attention and to wish you good luck on your digital implant dentistry field. Thank you so much.